It's Monday. Oh, Very good. <laughs> so, so. All right. Hey, welcome everybody. I'm here with Matt Slaybaugh, Director of Campus Ministry. Good morning. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Matt. Matt always says like, oh, uh, uh, what, I'm 58, going on 28. 20. Maybe it's maybe it's 18. Or I don't know. So I'm 26. So he's just a little older than me. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's a little chilly this morning. We got the jackets on. Yes. But uh, beautiful. Like yeah. I don't see, I don't see a cloud in the sky. That's uh, still nice. Yeah. It's it very nice. Just went. Uh, I think went in the upper 40s last night. A little bit, a little bit chilly. But <laughs> hey, it's nice out here. We're gonna have. We're gonna start a new book of the Bible today. First Corinthians. We're gonna be in First Corinthians chapter one. And I just want to remind you, we place all of our stuff online. All of the videos. GoodShepherdSC.org. And again, prayer requests and, and the like, pastorbeastbang at comcast.net. So, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start off with the reading today, and then Matt will pick up the second half. <clears throat> and again, we're going to be in 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We had a nice bike ride yesterday. There was, uh, uh, we, we rode on, a, it's called the Lauer Trail, but it's, Really, if you're looking at the spelling, it it would be lower, L-O-W-E-R, but it's called, <laughs> pronounced weird. Lower, Lower Trail. Huh. Uh, we went from, it's along the Juniata River, beautiful uh, mm. trail. Yeah. We passed three snakes <laughs> on the ride. Uh, we think one of them might have been a copperhead, so we, we kept our distance from some of those. The one's head kind of came up. Yeah, so. head <laughs> was there. So there was eight of us on the ride there, and we rode from... Uh, the trailhead in Alexandria to Williamsburg got ice cream and then rode back. Yeah, this guy really got ice cream. <laughs> Sorry. I, it's just like, um, it, it, they said, do you want one scoop or two scoops? And I said, well, I guess I'll go two scoops. The the two scoops was like this, <laughs> like, like eight scoops <laughs> compressed down in there. So we, I rode, uh, we were rather like, we rode about 20, 22 miles. I had a net gain of 500 calories over the 22 <laughs> miles. Anyway, that's that's the way it goes. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Thank you so much for joining us. And here we go. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those in every place, Call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace God has given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you're not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Paulus, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized into the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one <clears throat> may say that they were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. In verse 18 here, uh, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. 
it pleased God through the folly of what we preach and save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards, but many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. All right. So, a lot of good stuff in here. So let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll dig in. Gracious Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful morning. We're thankful for this time together uh, to study your word. We're thankful for uh, the love that you have for us. We're thankful for the chirping of the birds in the background and the hope that is ours in and through Christ. Teach us and lead us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, <clears throat> I was just, uh, a lot of times Paul will start off his letters with a word of, of thanksgiving. And I think it's easy to just kind of skim over that. But you see, I think, you see his heart here, that, that he truly cares for all these churches. And, um, you know, he just wrote verse 3, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 4, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. Then in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed among you. So, um, I think maybe for all of us, how do we start our day? Do we give thanks for the people that God has placed in our lives, or do we start our day grumbling and complaining, right? So, do we give thanks for the things that, uh, that God has richly blessed us with? Do we th give thanks for the people that are in our lives? Do we give thanks for our church family and the support that we have from our church family? And I think it's easy for us to in our society with all the negativity and all the constant social media and everything to go down uh, the path of just complaining, right? That's that's an easier class, course to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's gonna, I think it's a good reminder for us right here that he starts off his letters giving thanks. Um, but then he has to address an issue, um, you know, uh, about divisions in the church. Some people follow Paul, some Apollos, some others, and I, I wasn't even thinking this morning, I, I, well, I put on this sweatshirt, <laughs> it's the 500 year anniversary of the Reformation, <laughs> and so Luther had some great things to say, some great insights uh, into uh, the scripture and salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, but we have to admit there's a lot of division in the church, there's been... Uh, Buku <laughs> amounts of, uh, of uh, churches and Protestant churches that are out there. But even in the, in the Catholic Church, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of funny to me. I, you know, I've talked to, if you kind of look at, at Catholicism, there's a lot of division in there as well, uh, even though they're, quote, under a, a one, one church. So we find a, a lot of different ways to divide. And it, if it isn't over... Uh, doctrine and theology sometimes it's important that we have to make a stand on doctrine and theology but other times there's division in the church on other things uh, like you might have uh, people gather together that have the same economic background and they're kind of a similar mm -hmm. oh this is my suburban church that I go to and you know it's just similar economic background or uh, as someone once said, you know, it's, I forget, was it Billy Graham who said that uh, the most segregated hour uh, in, Christ, in, the, in America is Sunday morning, right? Mm -hmm. So you have racial division in the, in, in the church, and that's, that takes away from our witness, and that's what Paul is getting at here. He's saying, you know what, this is, this is ridiculous. Paul, Paul says, I didn't die for you. Christ died for you. 
that's what we should be about proclaiming in the midst of that. So it's it's easy to gather together with people that you have the kind of the same kind of background with, the same kind of experiences with. Hey, the secular unbelieving world does that. That's easy. You can gather together with that. Mm-hmm. But we're called to something different, and that's a unity in diversity in the body of Christ. So the gather together in there. So, and I think you see that in, in your student ministry. When you're ministering to uh, people from all kinds, all parts of the world, really, mm-hmm. um, different backgrounds and different experiences, and they bring that into our culture. So what are, you know, like what are some, what are some of the challenges you kind of see with, with that? You know, challenges. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, how you're going to approach somebody who comes from a, a background from a city or uh, rich or poor or international or American or, yeah. um, you know, uh, married family to divorced family. I mean, you could go yeah. through all the lists. Uh, yeah. You just have to handle each person differently uh, and meet them where they're at. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it, there's a challenge. So we have to be in awareness of that. It, as again, as again as, as I said, it's easy for us to gather together with people we have same experiences, uh, similar experiences, like the same things. You know, that's mm-hmm. you know, you naturally be friends with them, whether Jesus is in the picture or not, <laughs> right? So maybe real quick, I could just say I think one of the bigger challenges then when you talk about bridging those relationships between people is probably a willingness to. To listen and learn mm. uh, and to understand yeah. because good point. obviously you're going to have a different perspective from your upbringing mm-hmm. and background so yeah 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 we all bring our uh, certain prejudices background whatever you want to call it into the into the situation and and that's good that's a good point to listen and learn and try to understand and i think to understand that it starts with me right so yeah. i have to do that first yeah in order for others to do that that's so. really good that's good so then he goes on, and this is um, uh, Christ, verse 18 and following, uh, Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Um, and he really talks about how the cross is the focal point in which either it is uh, a stumbling block, he says, for the Jews, mm-hmm. and foolishness to the Gentiles. And the cross still is an offense to the world around us. People are willing to be to talk about Jesus as like this nice, good teacher, or something like that. But when you come to the cross, it's horrifying to people because they have to confront their own. We have to confront our own sin then, because it's making a statement that. God had to go this far. We were so deprived, so 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 um, in rebellion that God had to go to this extent, and we do not want to hear that. So the cross becomes this focal point. It's like a this stumbling block. No, that that can't be. And um, so the natural tendency is to say, you know, if I'm going to get right with God, I need to do that. I need to make myself right with God because my pride is intact, everything else. The cross removes all of that from us. It just crushes our pride when we look to the cross. And so it becomes that focal point, that, that, that stumbling block. And so the wisdom of the world says, hey, if I'm going to get right with God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the one that's going to do it. I'm going to be the one that's going to to uh, change the course. I'm going to be the one that's going to earn my way into heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what the wisdom of the world says. And the wisdom of the cross says, you can't do that. (laughs) I'm the one who has come, and I'm the one who has rescued you. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very powerful. Um, God chose, verse 27, God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Mm -hmm. What can look weaker than being stripped down and nailed to a cross. What can look weaker than that? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so that no human being, verse twenty nine, might boast in the presence of God. <laughs> you know, when when I die, when 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 Matt takes his last breath, I take my last breath. We're not going to be able to go before God and say, "Hey, let me show you my resume, God." It's pretty impressive. 
you know what I what I did. Uh, no, nobody will be able to boast. It, it says uh, in Romans that every mouth will be silenced before God. No one, none of us are going to be able to boast before God. It is in, in Christ alone. That is my. That's where my hope is. That's where the promise is. That's where our certainty is found, not in my own ability to do the right thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, which I, we stumble, I stumble and fall at. Um, so for us, uh, because of him, you who are in Christ, who, be, who became to us wisdom from God, <laughs> righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So it is written, let the one who boasts, <coughs> boast in the Lord. So that's uh, <clears throat> that's where our hope is. That's where our strength is. Any any other thoughts on this this section here? I mean, there's a lot in there. Yeah, a lot. You know, I just kept coming for some reason to the word like uh, help us to see the big picture of things and to give us perspective. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, I think we can become so inwardly focused on one situation, maybe with people. Yeah. And to be able to see the big picture of how can we unite around one common purpose right with the divisions kind of passage here yes. and then you know that last verse let no one let the one who boasts boast in the lord um and and how much we rely on our own strength oh, um, instead of it um, instead of what he's done right so that perspective change in your mindset of who's really doing the work here yep uh, <laughs> yeah jesus has done the heavy lifting we're just along for the mission right yeah that's what greg fink greg fink he, uh, likes to say in joining jesus on his mission mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, Jesus has done the heavy lifting. Right. We're just along. We're joining him on his mission. Right in there. So uh, let's have a word of prayer and yeah. and uh, blessings on your day. Father God, I pray for your blessing upon to be upon everyone who's listening to this, that they would grasp hold of how deep and how high and how uh, wide is your love for them in and through Jesus Christ, and that we would boast not in ourselves, uh, but we would humbly walk before you and boast in the work of Jesus Christ who can bring unity in the midst of chaos that we're facing right now as a nation. And so, Lord God, um, help us to see the world through the eyes of Jesus. We shouldn't be shocked uh, and horrified when people who don't know you uh, are reacting in, in anger and, and um, in, in violence in some cases, but we should, we should seek to bring the hope of Christ to all people. Uh, and that the church would be unified under the, the Lordship of Jesus Christ and that we would show the world a different way to move forward. So, Lord God, thank you so much for your grace and mercy. May your blessing, again, be upon all who are here or who are listening, and may your grace abound more and more in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, have a blessed day, everybody. Have a good day.